Hey, what's up guys? TBL here with the next episode of TBL Plays Shovel Knight. Last time we took down King Knight, and this time we're heading to the Lich Yard. And now, without any further ado, we are going to be going down to the lair of the Spectre Knight. For chivalry, I will defeat my foe. Anyway, this is generally the second stage most people come to. And uh, that's probably a good thing. This stage, I do believe, is a little bit tougher than, uh, a little bit tougher than Pride More Keep, which is really kind of like the introductory stage. You know, it's kind of more so the stage that teaches you all the mechanics of the game. And this is the one that really puts those skills to test. It's the first stage that really presents a challenge. This is the lair of the dark and mysterious Spectre Knight. Now, I am going to try to, uh, blaze through this stage as quickly as possible, because for this video, this one's going to be a little bit longer than usual. I'm actually planning on a... Uh, uh, no, that was a destructible wall. Remember this one, though. Remember, you got to hit those walls. There's always going to be hidden stuff and hidden treasures. But anyway, this video is going to be a bit longer than usual, because I'm going to be actually taking down more than just one stage. We're going to see if we can take down not only the Spectre Knight, but also the upcoming Mole Knight, I do believe, is going to be the next one after that. Alright, now these guys, during my first playthrough, I actually didn't know you could beat them. I thought they were invulnerable, so I spent the majority of my time just running from them. Which, uh, actually, in and of itself, isn't a bad strategy. Sometimes it's what'll keep you alive. Remember, it's never, never a bad thing to run from an enemy you can't defeat. Now, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is, uh, well, not really talk to you about it, just yet. I've got some uh, some big news coming up pretty soon, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to reveal that for you guys within the, the, the next few days. We'll see, though. I'm going to see if I can complete the entire game in nothing but the, uh, <laughs> the ornate plate armor. Because I, uh, I, I think it's pretty manly. It's, it's shiny, it's fun to look at and it makes you flip when you jump also you're super sparkly and as we uh, we learned from King Knight in the last episode being fabulous is uh, is always a good thing oh <laughs> completely forgot about the pitfall there this is a little bit of a dangerous area when the lights go out the only uh, the only real flash you get is from the lightning you kind of have to watch out for the pitfalls there I think down this way is uh, generally where the relic for this stage is. Oh, nope, and it's just a treasure chest. That's alright. You'll never hear Shovel Knight complain about money. He will, however, complain about skeletons that come out of walls. Ain't nobody got time for that. Alright, now this is kind of an interesting trap right here. You actually have to hit this one twice. Then, double bounce up and there you go. Again, watch out for the pitfalls here. Then once you've made your way over, you'll find yourself another musical note for our good buddy the Bard. This stage probably has one of a uh, probably has one of my favorite tracks from this game. It kind of reminds me of a uh, of the Transylvania stage from DuckTales, which again shouldn't be too surprising considering the the games that this game takes inspiration from. As far as I recall, the ghost actually can't be destroyed, at least not until you get to a later stage in the game where you have a specific item for destroying the ghost. But uh, I'll leave that for when we actually get there. Alright, so we're in another silhouetted room. You just want to make sure that you time your jumps right, because there are two spike traps in this uh, in this particular room, and spikes will once again kill you in one shot. Totally not my favorite thing. But for me, we're just going to abuse that propeller dagger. It makes some of these early game uh, pitfall traps so much easier. Alright, I've only got one full heart of life left, so <laughs> I'm really worried about getting hit in here, although... Uh, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to avoid it. The frogs are specifically difficult to avoid. Which is why they just hit me.
That, ladies and gentlemen, is why you use Chaos Spheres. Those things are, whoa, awesome. Honestly, though, the Chaos Sphere is a fantastic weapon for the early and end game, because uh, most of the bosses will siddle themselves up against a corner, and then you can just toss two of those things out. They'll bounce through, hit the boss, bounce off the wall, hit the boss again. You usually get about four to five hits in with a, a volley of two Chaos Spheres. Definitely one of the game's most helpful relics. I am trying to focus here. I'm a little bit worried about dropping into the uh, one of the two spike pits in this room. Definitely not something you want to happen. Let's see if I can. There we go. Trying to play a little more carefully this time around. In other news about the channel, we are getting pretty close to 1,200 subscribers, so a super shout-out to you guys for that. But as I was saying, subscriber number 1,200, which I gotta give major props to you guys. I really appreciate all the, uh, all the help that you've done in helping me grow the channel. Woo! There we go. Made it up here. Now, there's nothing but filthy bombs. That food, and here you go. This is where Chester is located. Oh, you know what? I do believe the relic for this stage is the Phase Locket, which, which helps you turn invincible for a few seconds. Great for when you're in some of those clutch moments. Once you get uh, pretty much max MP and the phase locket, it becomes pretty hard to die in some of the uh, some of the game's tougher situations. Especially once you get a. Uh, come on, there we go. Especially once you get two Ikers of Restoration. There we go. Get this treasure, and it's the second musical note for this stage. So, if this were a normal game and not a new game plus, we would have found both of the musical notes for the Lair of the Spectre Knight. The Lichyard, as it's called. And head onward and upward. I figure I haven't done Shovel Knight talk in quite a while, so I'm going to start uh, start speaking in the Shovel Knight voice. Alright, now in this room there's a trap like a trap hole in the uh, the second between the second and third pillar right down there but I can't quite remember how you get up to where that jewel is it's not really that important it's not too too much money but uh, I never could quite figure it out hidden wall right there we've got our second mini boss fight which means we're getting close to the end of the stage you gotta be careful with this guy it's easy to get trapped up against the wall when fighting him what ho! What glorious bounties await! There you go. We should be getting reasonably close to the ending here. Again, you're going to want to wait for the lightning to flash before you start jumping around all willy-nilly, because, uh, <laughs> as we saw before, that's, that doesn't always end very well. Fortunately for me, I am wearing the ornate plate, which, uh, in addition to being super flashy, also causes little sparkles to fly out of uh, Shovel Knight's back when he uh, when he runs around, which kind of makes it easy to keep track of yourself. All right, and here we go. Normally there's food right here, but in New Game Plus it's just a bomb. This is right before. Uh, the Spectre Knight, so hopefully we're ready to take this guy on. Indeed. Voice acting time. All right, now for Spectre Knight. Of course, he's kind of a ghost. Something dark and evil. So I give him kind of like a, a, a pseudo Mark Hamill Joker voice, although I'm terrible at that. I'm, I, I'm too vo deep voice for that, so. This is no place for the living, mortal. You shall be summoned when it is your time. And everyone has a time. As we saw with your beloved shield knight. Like something spectery like that. Lies! I won't believe such talk from phantoms. Your very existence is a vile deception. 
<laughs> the Enchantress is just full of surprises. She granted me new life. So that I may take yours! Or something spooky like that. Except, nope, or actually he might take our life because uh, we are super low on HP. Now, this is one of the bosses who has a specific pattern of attacks that it just repeats itself over and over again. And I, it, it's pretty easy to take him down. Just make sure you watch for the, uh, the scythe right there. Dodge it when it comes near you, and you'll be fine. See if we can go through this without uh, losing any any health. Although I highly doubt that. I'm, I'm, and that's why I highly doubt it. Although you know what, that's perfectly fine. This is actually for the better because now it means I can jump right into the fight with full magic and full health, and uh, he's gonna have a hard time reaping my soul in uh, those conditions. And you'll have to forgive me for the static image a couple of seconds ago. When I first started this fight, I accidentally pressed start and skipped the dialogue and went straight into the fight, so I had to go back a different time and uh, re-record the, the, the dialogue itself so I could get the lines and whatnot. But uh, it, was, it looked a little too odd trying to splice in the video, so I just left the audio in and left a static image. So, again, sorry about that. Now, Spectre Knight himself seems like one of those really daunting, hard-to-fight bosses until you pick up his pattern. He's actually really easy to dodge. Just uh, as soon as you see the, the scythe flying over towards you, jump over it or jump under it, and then just watch for where it goes and sits, and that's, where, that's generally where Spectre Knight will uh, reappear. Head over there, hit him, or just keep hitting him with ranged items like the uh, flame wand here, and you'll be done with this in no time. And now, Shovel Knight, once again, you have earned yourself a very well-deserved rest. Defeating the Lich Yard, Spectre Knight, Pride More Keep, and King Knight will open up the next batch of stages, which is the Explodatorium, the Lair of the Plague Knight, the Iron Whale, which is the Lair of the Treasure Knight, and the Lost City, which is the Lair of the Mole Knight. Now these two, we're actually going to be taking on Treasure Knight and Plague Knight. I uh, misspoke earlier. I thought, I originally thought that Mole Knight was coming next. I kind of forgot that Plague Knight and uh, and Treasure Knight himself come before that. So we're going to be taking on them next. I think we're going to head over to Treasure Knight section first, and then finally we'll wrap this video up with the Explodatorium and taking down Plague Knight. Now, as for the stage we're on right now, this is just another one of the bonus stages that unlocks after you complete a level. You can go back on some of these stages and uh, basically compete in a smaller version of them for extra money. Now, you might be asking yourself, why can I already do that for the Iron Well? Well, I forgot to say at the start of this video, but I made a bit of a mistake when I started recording. I uh, actually played through the stages and forgot to hit the video record button, so like I went through all of Spectre Knight stage, all of uh, Treasure Knight stage, and then all of Plague Knight stage without actually recording any video, so I had to go back and re-record all these stages, and that's what we're doing right now. So that's why a lot of the stages are already unlocked. There are a few other bonus stages that are opened up right now. But we're going to go ahead and skip it and head straight for the Iron Whale and the Lair of the Treasure Knight. It's shoveling time! Alright, just taking a moment to pause right here. Alright, and here we are at the Lair of the Treasure Knight. Let's take him down. This is actually one of the more interesting stages in the game, in my opinion. Partially because of this. These little uh, hermit crabs right here, they have an interesting effect. When you take them out, their shells stick around and you can hit them around. And they, uh, they, they fly all over the place and basically become projectiles that can take out enemies and blocks. Check for those bubble platforms. They basically stay put for about a second or so. And give way. Up, oh, shining spot here, although there's no real need for me to actually fish anything out of there. I know I've already made a ton of comparisons between this and like old school games, but uh but this stage reminds me so much of Bubble Man stage in uh, Mega Man 2. Like, whether it's the music, or just, you know, the whole water theme. Although I do know 
that that kind of sort of may have been what they were going for. I don't know. Bubble Man didn't have an enemy that annoying. Although, what you can see the enemy they're using is uh, actually the special relic for this stage, the Throwing Anchor. A mighty weapon in and of its own right. Alright, this is one of the parts where you have to be a little bit careful. As you can see, there's spikes on the roof. So you have to time your jumps. Because you definitely don't want to get hit with that. Spikes in this game are a one-hit kill. But anytime you touch one, it's uh, pretty much game over. Now, there are actually multiple ways across this uh, this room right here. You can either bounce off these uh, these silver hermit crabs like I am right now, or actually metal hermit crabs it looks like, or you can just cheat and use the phase locket and walk right across. Either way, you'll net yourself a nice little treasure. We're actually going to cheat here. Because I'm afraid of, of, of overdoing a jump and just getting screwed. Hidden wall here. And an enemy. Oh, I lost it. Oh, this guy. I'm not even going to bother with him. <laughs> he can just taste the mighty power of my shovel. Generally what those guys do is they, uh, they float around and they'll uh, just send projectiles at you. Now we've reached the part of the unknown squid tentacles. A little bit of Cthulhu action going on here, but basically you want to use these guys to bounce around while not taking damage from the randomly appearing eels right there. The squid things only take damage on the eyes, and you're supposed to generally use them to bounce around the stage. We'll be getting to some of those parts a little bit later. Oh, hey, how you doing? For those of you who can't see what's going on right here, my little brother just walked in. Remember, there's a hidden wall right here that will take you to another area. I do believe this leads to a treasure, and I'm correct. But as you can see, the squid tentacles will pop up, and you're going to want to use those to bounce on back. No, you don't want to get touched by squid tentacles. Anyways, everybody say hey to my brother. He just kind of walked in, so you know what? Now that, now that you've walked in, you're going to have to be part of the stream. Uh -oh. Yep. He's actually a major fan of uh, old school platformers. Mega Man Zero. Oh, looks like I made myself a small mistake. Okay. Well, as usual, since this is on New Game Plus mode, there aren't as many checkpoints as there usually are, so we would actually have to start from the beginning of the stage, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and we'll catch you guys when we get back to the spot where we died. But uh, he's a major fan of the Mega Man series, especially Mega Man Zero. It was one of his favorite games, or game series, rather, on the, uh, what was it, on the Game Boy Advance? But as you can see, you pretty much have to hit these squid tentacles on the eye for them to break. And then come back up here. Drop on down. Yeah, yeah, I've seen I've seen more than enough hentai to know where that's going. That is the phase locket. It's a super cheat hacks item that basically turns you invincible for a couple seconds. I uh, didn't really need to not take a hit there, but I needed to float for a second, so I figured I'd go ahead and use it. I've only got like two hearts left. Why does that keep happening? Literally on every stage that I've played on thus far, and this is actually a, a mini boss right here, but uh, on every stage that I've played on thus far, I've always gotten down to two two pieces of health left, and then then beaten the stage. Now this is actually definitely not a trap. It's totally legit. You know, there's just a, 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 a relic chest sitting right here. What, you mean to tell me that this was not an obvious, obviously open treasure chest? No, it was a trap. This is very reminiscent of Mega Man 2. If you can remember the, the, the second part of Wily's Castle, where you kind of have to you have to run from the dragon before fighting it. Uh oh. Whew. Oh wow, that. Hey, it's how a shovel knight fights. <laughs> All right, once you get to this platform, this angler will stop fighting you, or stop chasing you rather, and start fighting you. He looks big and scary, but he's pretty easy to dodge. Let's well, keep. He's a, he, well, not so gentle, but more so ineffective. Anyways, here's our first checkpoint. We are actually going to violate nightly rule number uh, number 15, I do believe it was, because <laughs> last time we did, last time we uh, we destroyed the checkpoint, didn't turn out so well for us. Hold on, I'm noticing a hidden wall here. Go ahead and break that bad boy down. Then head over here. I do believe this is another area for... Uh, uh oh. 
No time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> wow. I didn't realize killing him would cause him to shoot out all of his projectiles. I'm glad you, you know, you looked away for a second, kid, because you, you just missed me fail horribly. I'm, I'm going to try to stop failing horribly. Anyways, luckily, though, we're not too far away from where we were before, so we're going to hop right back on over. I don't know if we'll be able to get all of that treasure. We're going to try. Through, like, what, Shovel Knight and voice through all of this? We got ourselves a treasure chest? Okay, well, I mean... Indeed, we found ourselves a treasure. I'd imagine that would get on people's nerves, though. You know, that, that's why I don't do, like, the entire Let's Play in Shovel Knight voice. <laughs> oh, it'll be alright. A Shovel Knight does not worry about such things. Oops, I meant to fish over there. Oh, well. You don't want to drop down. At this point, you're really supposed to be utilizing the, uh, the, the relic you achieve from this stage, which is, of course, the Throwing Anchor. Which is, in, a, in and of itself, a great item. It goes through platforms, deals basic damage, but it goes through platforms, and it has an arc, so it can hit enemies more than once. There you go. Gonna utilize this to fly yourself over, hop onto this platform. Oop. Bad timing on my part. That's good enough. We should be getting close to the end, actually. Although I haven't seen the second mini-boss yet. Now at this part, this anchor, if it drops down on top of you, if you hit the blade part down there, it does count as a hit, so you want to be really careful. Let it drop down, and then when it's on its way back up, that's when you'll want to try to jump back on it. Sorry, I'm trying to focus on hitting this guy. I am not a fan of these enemies. Even when you take them out, like if you one-shot them with the Warhorn, they'll immediately fire their projectiles at you. Not cool. Alright, now there is a hidden room all the way to the right of this room. So what you're going to want to do is stay on top of these anchors. There we go. <laughs> I apologize that that took so long. And you know what? You're a douche. I don't care about you. <laughs> Warhorn. Feel the mighty Warhorn. Indeed. Uh-oh. I'm still kind of... <laughs> oh, so... Is that another nightly rule? Yes. You must think. You must be cognitive. Okay, so that's rule number number. What is that? Sixteen and 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 seventeen or whatever number we're on. You must think and always use the propeller dagger. Seriously, though, the propeller dagger does help a lot. No, always blame other people. That way you... <laughs> yeah, that is how it works. It's totally how it works. Right now I'm just pretty much looking for more MP. These items, or these enemies, they turn into projectiles when you defeat them. You can use them to pretty much destroy everything. I think they're pretty much the only thing that can destroy those uh, gray ones right there. Maybe. I don't know. That's a uh, great expertise on a Let's Play, right? Does this do something? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay, maybe they don't destroy them. Ha! Not this time. Pretty sure this is near the end. There should be a save point. Yep, there we go. So we are right about to make our make our way over to uh, Treasure Knight. Let me go ahead and pre-equip the Chaos Sphere here. All right, now Treasure Knight is an underwater treasure hunter. And when I look at him, I don't know why, but I imagine like a Russian accent, you know? Go for it. So, <clears throat> all right, this, give me a moment. My gems, my vessel, my ocean. Your very presence tarnishes. You know, maybe the reason I think that is because he reminds me of... Uh, of uh, the hunt for Red October, you know, like Sean Connery, where he was playing a Russian. <laughs> you want to lay claim to the sea itself? Your greed knows no bounds, treasure knight. Your hands are no less dirty. Even now, others are paying for your avarice. Let us duel. Winner take all. Indeed. Although, I'm going to let myself die right here so that I can come back with full HP. For great shovel justice. Alright, now, treasure knight... I think is probably one of the cooler knights of no or uh, knights of the order of no quarter. But that being said, yeah, <laughs> butts of the order of no quarter. But that being said, even he is pretty easy to defeat if you know how to use the right items, which for me is just the chaos sphere. Because look at that, 
<laughs> Dude, the Chaos Sphere is so broken in, uh, in terms of beating these bosses. It's like Mega Man 2, Metal Blade. Remember Metal Man's attack? Yeah, yeah. Once you get that in Mega Man 2, pretty much you can steamroll every single boss except ones that like reflect it. Oh man, Chaos, Chaos Spheres, use those things. For you people who are playing Shovel Knight, use them. The multi-hits you get on them will just wreck everything. Anyways, well done Shovel Knight. You've earned yourself another night of respite. Alright, I know this video's gone on for quite some time, but we've got one more stage that I want to cover here today. I wanted to cover a lot of ground for this video, and then uh, possibly, possibly either tomorrow or over the weekend, we're going to be doing a live stream where we cover pretty much the rest of the game. It's going to be uh, going to be an interesting time. Alright, so the final area we're going to be covering in this video, and I know we've gone on for like maybe about 25 or 26 minutes or so, but we are going to be covering the Explodatorium, the Lair of the Plague Knight. You ready for this? We're going to take him down. For chivalry. Now this stage is a little bit different than the others. Uh, rather than throwing tons of enemies and whatnot at you and, uh, and and pitfalls and whatnot, this place almost exclusively, almost exclusively utilizes traps, like the ones you're seeing right now. Flame floors, which are fine, just keep moving. Do not stop moving at all. And uh, as you may have noticed there, watch out for the green rats. They explode. Which is one of the reasons why you should go for Treasure Knight beforehand, because he gives you a uh, a ranged attack that ignores platforms and uh, obstacles and just goes right through them. You can use that to destroy the rats before they reach you. Also, what you just saw there, that purple bird, is a douche. He's a massive douche. Well, no, not not exactly like Mega Man, because uh, you don't have to beat the boss to get the relic in this. You find the relic through the... Uh-oh! Oh, <laughs> that was too close. But you find the relic just in the stage itself, and um, and then you can use that relic, and that relic generally does a ton of damage to the boss. Or you can ignore the relic itself and just utilize the Chaos Spheres, catch a boss next to a, next to a wall, and just let those things run loose. No kind exploding rat. Now, on my first playthrough, I actually didn't find the uh, the relic for this stage. I missed it. Uh oh. But um, I actually missed it for the stage. The relic for this stage is the uh, the alchemy coin, I do believe. And um, it does awesome damage against Plague Knight himself. It does a full bar of damage. But uh, I I missed it on my first playthrough, and I had to buy it from Chester afterwards. If you guys who are watching remember from um, episode two of the uh, of, of the Let's Play, taking on Pride More Keep and uh, and King Knight, <laughs> and he had in his uh, in, in Pride More Keep there are these rats with propellers attached to them. I, I imagine it's probably the same mad scientist Plague Knight here who who, who created the, the the little plague rats like just like he did with the uh, the propeller the propeller rats. He's got a rat in one hand and like a bomb in the other, and he's saying to himself, "I will fuse these." Okay, let's wait for this to pop up. Oops. Okay, come on. It's gonna be a little... As I recall, there are a ton more traps, so I'm probably gonna be abusing the phase locket. The phase locket is really like the easy mode button of this game, since it makes you completely invulnerable for uh, for about a second. Oh, because that'll happen right there. Coincidentally, this is also why uh, <laughs> I decided not to not to speed run this. There's no way I'd be able to beat it. I am nowhere near that skilled. You gotta believe. I, I gotta believe, but I, I'm just I, I believe I've been playing Call of Duty too long. Yeah. My my old school uh, platforming skills aren't what they used to be. Accursed rats. It's funny because I used to play games like you know Super Mario Bros. and uh, Mega Man 2 and speed run those games. Uh oh. Thankfully though, oops. We have uh, an Iker of boldness. I'm gonna go ahead and use that so I can just go ham on this dude. 
not have to worry about hitboxes or anything like that. An Iker of Boldness gives you 10 seconds of invulnerability, which as you can see turns you into a monster. A monster of chivalrous victory. Chivalrous, I think I just made that word up. It's, he's a shovel knight, I'm trying to come up with shovel words. What ho indeed. And once again, please excuse the deathly fail, we're gonna go ahead and skip right back to where we died. But yeah, I used to speedrun games like Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 2, Super Mario Bros 3. Because I used to spend all my time playing uh, old school NES games. Remember when we had our NES kid? Good times. But uh, I've kind of been spoiled by <laughs> by newfangled games like Call of Duty and whatnot that don't require uh, don't require much tactical input. You know what? You're holding the gamepad right now, so I want you to manage my inventory, okay? I will do that. And get me killed? I don't know if you'll be able... Well, actually, yeah, you might be able to get me killed if you, like, change my my relic <laughs> right when I need it. You just gotta rely on them Chaos Spheres, son. At least till you run out of MP. Especially because this enemy takes recoil from the hits. That means the Chaos Sphere is gonna get an extra one or two blasts off on him. Look at that. Look at that! Use the Chaos Sphere. That's what it is. It is the Ender's Orb. Alright, had to use up my Iker of Boldness there. Didn't really want to, but uh, I'd rather play it safe than sorry. I know there's going to be a checkpoint after this. I'd rather go ahead and use that up, get to a checkpoint, and then take a hit and die. Because I don't want to have to go back through this whole stage again. And there we go. Playing it safe pays off. So we made it to our first save point. I'm sorry that took so long. Uh-oh. we can make it through here. See, this stage is absolutely devious when it comes to traps. What with the crazy birds dropping stuff on you. The the explosive rats who uh, who were made by the same mad scientist who likes to fuse rats to propellers, like uh, like that Invader Zim joke. <laughs> Remember the uh, the episode of Invader Zim with the... I, I talked about this on a previous episode, but I never told my, my brother about this. Fear the Warhorn. But I uh, remember in that episode of Invader Zim where Zim gets like kidnapped by the aliens who think he's human and they want to fuse him to stuff. Yes. We made him twice as we shouldn't have fused him. We made him twice more powerful. Twice, twice as deadly. <laughs> That's what I imagine Plague Knight, who's the boss of the stage, did with like the these rats and like the rats that are in one of the previous stages, Pride More Keep. They um. Now see, why would you even? What's the purpose of that? Oh man. But I imagine like uh, that, that's what he was he was thinking as he fused them. That, that he's gonna be making them more powerful. I have no problems <laughs> cheating here because screw that, that's ridiculous. Look at all this gold. Phase lock it, people. It is a uh, no hit runs best friend. As long as you've got uh, plenty of MP. I think it takes about 6 MP per shot. Yeah, on New Game Plus mode, all the food things are. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get. All the New Game Plus uh, food baskets are bombs. Bomb? Rope? Lamp oil. You want it? Well, even if you don't, you're gonna. Oh, come on! Even if you don't, you're gonna get it. All right, so we should be making our way towards the end of the stage now. I vaguely remember this being near the end. And actually, you know what? I yeah, I do believe it's near the end because I re I, re I I recognize the slimy green bomb shovel knights, the shovel knight doppelgangers, as being right next to a uh, plague knight himself. So we're gonna see if we can burst through this without too much trouble. We've got plenty of health, so I'm not worried about that. Hopefully we'll be able to clear up the rest of this stage and defeat Plague Knight without a, without any incident. Go ahead and utilize the good old throwing anchor here. It's the easiest way to break these guys from the bottom. These phony Shovel Knights, they have no justice, and therefore they cannot be abided. What ho! Feel the wrath of my warhorn. 
And uh, I, we're going try hard mode right here. I'm not going to uh, let any of these things kill me anymore because I'm getting tired of that happening. Yeah, follow uh, the legendary Isaiah's advice there. Don't get hit. Anyway, here is the second checkpoint. If uh, you're playing on normal mode, there's food hidden right here, I do believe. Yep, but on, of course, <laughs> on New Game Plus, it's nothing but bombs. Anyway, we've got Plague Knight coming up next. And look at this. This, this is so Mega Man style. Just dropping down right here. <laughs> Leave me alone. Show yourself, Plague Knight. Your trickery will not stop me. Trickery? <laughs> the fruits of my research are no mere trick. <laughs> or I imagine like uh like, like if you've watched any of the recent episodes of One Piece, um uh Brooke, his laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 uh, uh that's what I'd imagine Plague Knight laughing like. Now let's have a lesson, shall we? I promise. <laughs> it will be enlightening. I promise too. Now uh if you picked up his relic, the alchemy coin deals decent damage to him, but uh we're going to stick with what we know, which is throw Chaos Spheres, prop it. Now, when Plague Knight summons these uh, purple purple glasses, they actually explode when he throws those little fireballs into them. you got to be really careful with that. That's a lot of damage to be taken up. As you can see, we've got him down to near the end of his life. Out of MP though, so we're gonna have to do this the manual way. And there we go. None may stand to the might of the Shovel Justice. Picked up a good 2,500 gold, and we are finally finished with the Explodatorium, and we have defeated Plague Knight. That's all for now, big guy. And I do believe Shovel Knight has earned himself a well-deserved, well-deserved Knight of Rest. Anyways, with Plague Knight defeated, we've unlocked some of the next batch of stages, like the Armor Outpost Village, and the Hall of Champions, which is actually kind of a side quest sort of place. But pretty much we are going to be done for now. On the next episode, we are going to be taking on the Lost City and the Lair of the Mole Knight. So anyways, that's pretty much going to be it for this one, guys. We did take down Spectre Knight, Treasure Knight, and Plague Knight in this video. Now, the next video is probably either going to be coming out tomorrow or on Saturday, and it's probably going to be a live stream. We are going to live stream and try to blast out as many of these stages, the remaining stages in the game as we can, and then hopefully take on the uh, Tower of Fate, defeat the Enchantress, and then save Shield Knight. Anyways, hopefully you guys liked this video, and if you did, feel free to check out my channel where I've got a ton more gaming videos, including more Shovel Knight coming out soon. Oh, and don't forget, I've got some big news coming out soon. I'm probably going to make a video about it either today or tomorrow, so stay tuned to the channel. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. As always, I am the Black Lake. You guys stay frosty.